Thank you. I'm Melissa Brown, and I'll be reading the 2NC. Subpoint A. Syria regime is on the brink of collapse. Subpoint 1. Assad has lost support from the members of the Ba'ath Party. Sarah Van Gelder, journalist of Yes Magazine. Yes Magazine, August 29, 2013, access September 29, 2013. Zunes also reports that hundreds of members of the Syrian Ba'ath Party, a key source of support for Assad, have left the party in outrage over the regime's killing of the nonviolent protesters. But he says, defections could be expected if foreigners suddenly attacked the country. U.S. intervention would play into the hands of the Syrian regime, triggering an outpouring of nationalist support for Damascus. The same thing happened in 1983-1984 following U.S. Navy air attacks on the Syrian positions in Lebanon. He says in 2008, after U.S. Army commando raids in eastern Syria. Subpoint C, past observations have shown that intervention brings instability. Michael Shank, journalist of the U.S. News, U.S. News, August 27, 2013, to September 29, 2013. We've been here before, the haste that comes with invasion. The White House of every political stripe inevitable, inevitably makes intervention look essential and urgent. We saw this in Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Yemen, Somalia, Pakistan, and more. Yet, we're leaving these countries no better off. This liberation language isn't bearing fruit. Just observe the continued escalating violence in Iraq and Afghanistan. The instability in Libya and Yemen, the insecurity in Somalia and Pakistan, our approach is all wrong. Subpoint so three. Intervention in Syria would only lengthen the civil war. By Patrick M. Reagan, professor of the Peace Studies and Political Science, University of Notre Dame, CNN, September 5, 2013, last access, September 29, 2013. The results point to patterns in what happens when states intervene to try to help their preferred actor and the results are strong and consistent that interventions rarely work to promote peace or reduce violence. For example, my own research has shown that the likelihood of a civil war lasting for four years without an intervention is 37%. But if there is an intervention, the likelihood that it lasts for four years is 60%. The intervention accounts for the 50% increase in the length of the war. Subpoint B. Intervention would respark the civil war. Subpoint 1. Intervention would increase support for Assad and the regime. Sarah Van Gelder, executive editor of Yes Magazine, Yes Magazine, August 29, 2013, last access, September 15, 2013. <coughs> U.S. intervention would play into the hands of the Syrian regime, triggering an outpouring of nationalist support for Damascus. The same thing happened in 1983-1984 following U.S. Navy air attacks. Okay, so point two. Strike could lead to increased civilian casualties by Ezra Klein, BA in Political Science, Washington Post, September 15, 2013, lost access September 29, 2013. Our strikes could result in heavy civilian casualties. It would be the bitterest of ironies if we struck Syria to punish Assad's barbarism only to end up killing thousands of innocent lives ourselves. The Pentagon is working up a target list with the express intent of limiting Syrian casualties, but the intelligence behind that list could go very wrong. Remember when we bought that pharmaceutical plant in Sidon or the Chinese embassy in Belgrade? Subpoint C. The civil war would lead to more bloodshed and innocent lives to be lost. Subpoint 1. Assad will retaliate against them and kill more innocents. By Ezra Klein, BA in Political Science, Washington Post, September 15, 2013, last access, September 29, 2013. We know that civilian casualties rise when civil wars turn against the regime. So if Assad feels more threatened after our strikes and his forces begin massacring more innocents in an attempt to break the will of the opposition, what will we do then? Stand by as long as they use conventional weapons? This is how escalation happens. Subpoint two, the killing of innocent civilians would end up tearing the country apart. Max Fisher, Washington Post journalist, Washington Post, September 3rd, 2013, last access September 29, 2013. Assad would remain defiant in the face of an attack. It is not as if he is constrained now, but he would probably step up the violence, both to exert control within his country and to demonstrate the United States and its allies cannot in intimidate him. At the same time, the regime's Iranian patrons, Hezbollah supporters, would increase their investment in the conflict, meaning more weapons and more <coughs> fighters pouring in Syria, resulting in more atrocities. And on the other side, Syrian opposition groups would welcome a steady stream of foreign fighters who care more about killing all the whites and shites than the fate of the country.
This environment would heighten serious sub substantial sectarian, ethnic, and political divisions, pulling the country apart. And I send open for cross examination. <laughs> So you're stating that right now there is a current problem in Syria, correct? Their own problem, yes. Their own problem. So you're saying that right now this, uh, the Syrian civil war is our problem? No. But your evidence shows that right now there are a lot of civilian deaths going on and that it is a current issue that's um, led to a lot of violence and a lot of uh, innocent lives, death, the, the deaths of many innocent lives. I'm saying that if we intervened, it will lead to more bloodshed and innocent lives we lost too. Okay, so right now, what's to prevent Assad from using more chemical weapons on his own people? Um, well, if we went in there, it would cause a lot more deaths than he's already caused himself. They already know how to make chemical weapons. They could make them again and come and retaliate against us. But we right, don't know what's going to happen. But right now, would an, a strike by Assad with another attack of chemical weapons, do you think a second one with no response from the United States could lead to other countries being emboldened to use them themselves? I think... Is it a possibility? Yes. And right now, the only, the only way that, we can, uh, that we're hoping to stop that is by getting rid of their chemical weapons, which right now is in the hands of Russia. Correct? Okay. Yes. So, 